Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome to the Daily Fountain, our daily devotional program of Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Let us pray. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. O King of Kings, that is what I love to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you. Almighty God, there is none like you. You alone are worthy, there's none like you. In heaven and on earth and beneath the earth, none compares with you. We give you praise, we bow unto your exceeding majesty. We reverence you, awesome God. We give you praise, we glorify you, we thank you for the gift of this beautiful day that we've received as a gift. Precious gift from you, Lord. May your name be glorified. We pray that you so order our lives this day, that our lives will bring forth the fruit of dividend of honor and glory unto your holy name. Let your name be glorified for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Our text for this morning's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, and reading at verse 11. Reading from the King James Version. John 20 from verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Then said Jesus unto her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended to my father. But go to the, my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Now, that's a um, uh, beautiful text attesting to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, a while ago, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord uh, uh, on that Easter day feast. Um, one of the greatest events in human history, variously attested to in authentic documents of history, particularly uh, some of the non-Christian uh, global accounts, especially the works of Josephus Flavius, the noted historian of antiquity anyway. And of course, uh, deeply uh, accounted for uh, in, the, in the Bible text. Now, the development of that resurrection experience um, is worthy of note because it bears for us a vital technical lesson for day-to-day -day living, especially as it relates to our daily walk with the Lord. Now, first of all, that text in John chapter 20 from verse 1 shows us that, you know, Jesus had lain in the grave uh, since the crucifixion on uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and then it, now it was the third day, which was a Sunday morning. And then some women went to the tomb to perform what we may rightly call um, a local preservative procedure. Because as you read in some of the other gospel accounts, they went along with some leaves, some aloes, some spices. We know from uh, these records, uh, some of these uh, leaves and spices and herbs actually have some uh, antimicrobial uh, action. So uh, the purpose for which they had gone to the gravesite that morning uh, was probably associated with some local embalmment procedures, uh, some preservative procedures anyway, uh, so to say. So, but, and then Mary Magdalene is singled out in this narrative that we read in the Gospel according to uh, St. John. Anyway, so she was there early. And then uh, it's also worthy of note that since after the crucifixion, the disciples of Jesus, especially the male ones, uh, who were the leaders of the fellowship, had gone into hiding. Well, the reasons are obvious. The society at that time was basically uh, masculine. Um, the women would not have presented much threat to society. Jesus was tried along the legal procedures associated with rebellion, um, you know, and such uh, procedures would hold the men more accountable rather than the women. So it, it won't be completely out of place that whilst the women felt some measure of ease to move about, and we'll see that also in relation to the crucifixion procedure, that the women uh, in the ministry of Jesus actually tarried by the cross of Jesus until the end of uh, the crucifixion procedure. Well, that tells a great deal about their commitment to the faith. But in addition also, there is the cultural slant that the women would not present any threat to the military authorities of the day, whereas the men would. Anyway, I'm not making excuses for the fact that the men are hardly uh, more effectively committed to the things of the Lord. But anyway, in this particular circumstance, it would appear that the men considered, considered a threat if they were associated with Jesus, uh, the women constituted much less of a threat. So anyway, these women were there at the graveside to uh, minister to the body of our Lord Jesus. And then there was this discovery that the body of our Lord Jesus was found to be missing. And then in this text, if you read now, 
John chapter 20 from verse 1. Mary Magdalene ran back to the disciples and broke this striking news to them. And then spurred by this awful development, uh, Peter and John are specifically named here. They ran to the graveside. Peter, being much older, ran as much as uh, his uh, lingering strength could carry him. And John outran him. And then, and then the procedure thenceforth became very, very worthy of note. Um, let me read verse 6. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seared the linen clothes lie. If you read the text uh, uh, in verse 5, he said, And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So anyway, there are three segments. One, one person got there and must had only enough courage to peep in. And then the second person got there and then didn't feel satisfied with just peeping in. He went in and, uh, and then beheld some things. And then, and then you notice that the author of this text is careful to document procedurally the fact that it would appear that the closer one got, the more one saw. All right? So anyway, and then... The two disciples, verse 10, the two, then the disciples went away again unto their home. But Mary stood there outside the sepulchre weeping. So, so let's try to graduate this response. Number one, one person got there and then peeped and was satisfied to see as much as they could. Second person got there and then went in and saw a little more. And then in any case, those two male disciples quickly got out of the graveyard and took off back home. But Mary was not satisfied. The body of our Lord Jesus was still missing up until that time. And Mary was not satisfied. And uh, she couldn't take no for an answer. She had not found the answer to the critical challenge of the moment, which was the fact that the body of our Lord Jesus was, not, was missing, was not found, and she would stop at nothing to um, find uh, an explanation to this gruesome situation. And so she stood there. Maybe the best she could do was weep her heart out. Now, this scenario um, typifies um, the graded uh, responses that we present in the daily routines of our relationship with God. And that's what has captured my attention this morning. The fact that in this simple scenery, we find the usual patterns of uh, uh, gradations of our, um, you know, of our, you know, com committed, uh, yeah, dedicated or devoted responses to the issues of our relationship with God, you know. Now, Mary stood there until she found an answer. All right. The Bible actually says that, uh, you know, if you read uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, from verse 31, it says, The people that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, every so often, you know, we are contented with you know, just uh, a little, uh, something like a little icing on the cake. I mean, a little, um, just a little tip of the iceberg response in our walk with God. We are, we are every so often satisfied with just having done a little routine response in our walk with God. I mean, for Peter and John, 
it was just okay, probably just enough that they heard that the body of the Lord was missing. And they ran, ran to the place and they confirmed that the body was missing. Well, that's okay. Whatever has happened, whatever it is, that's okay. But there was somebody who said, no, we must get to the bottom of the matter. Sometimes in dealing with the Lord, we need to stick on. We need to persevere until we have got to the bottom of the matter. The Bible indeed says that, it says, God was speaking to his people. He said, you will seek me and find me when you would have sought me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you would have sought me with all your heart. I, I, I must be honest with you, in dealing with God, uh, there comes a time when it's not enough to scratch the issues on the surface and pretend to have done something sufficient. Indeed, the primary reason many people never get to the root of their crisis is that uh, every so often they are satisfied with a tiny scratch on the surface of the problem and they are willing to walk away believing that they have done everything that needs to be done. Far from it, sometimes we need to seek the Lord. The Bible indeed says it in Psalm 24, if you read from verse 5 and verse 6, it says, such is the generation that seek the Lord, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Such is the generation. And in verse 5, he says, He shall receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Does it mean that God deliberately hides his face? No. Does it mean that God refuses to respond to our yearnings? No. It, it, it only means that there are some issues, some matters that, uh, for which it will not be enough to, uh, you know, to be satisfied with just a tiny scratch on the surface. Have you, have you prayed about this matter and uh, the, the person has just recited a few recitable prayers? Listen to me, there comes a time when in dealing with some of the ch challenges we are confronted with, we need to you know, shut ourselves in, you know, lock, lock ourselves behind the doors and seek God's face. You know, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 36 and chapter 37, something happened there. A certain king, who was the reigning king in Judah, you know, was sick and uh, he was actually, uh, Isaiah chapter 38, let me read from verse 1 there. It, it, it bears an eloquent lesson unto us in our day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. It said, uh, Isaiah 38 from verse 1, it said, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt surely die and not live. Then, look at verse 2 there, it says, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Look at verse 4. It says that then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. That's amazing. Hezekiah was sick. He was a king. And no less a personality than 
the authentic prophet of God, came to him with a message directly from the Lord and said, put your house in order, you will surely die. The man said, no. You know, the Bible says in the book of Numbers, chapter 14, in verse 28, it says, as I live, says the Lord, the very words they've spoken into my ears, that will I do. You know, many people think that we human beings don't have a right to negotiate, to uh, interact in the systems of divine decisions. No, sir. In Genesis chapters 18 and 19, heavenly beings came to the earth and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, visited Abraham. And then, uh, you know, Abraham received them. There were three personalities. And then in the course uh, of their duty, they hinted Abraham that they were going to Sodom to um, execute judgment over the land of Sodom. And then Abraham began to make intercession. What if you find 30 righteous people in the land of Sodom? Will you still dis de destroy the land? And then Jesus, who was a member of that visiting panel, said to Abraham, no, Jesus, we know that Jesus was, that in, was in that visitation team because only God could receive intercession. Not even angels can receive intercession. And then when that intercessory segment finished, the Bible said two angels turned with their faces towards Sodom. What does that tell us? It tells us that in the matters and schemes of the earth, we human persons created in the image of God who are at peace with God, who enjoy a living relationship with God, have our own personal views to also assert in the schemes of divine processing. In other words, even after God had turned out from heaven, we also have our opinion to express. No wonder in this Isaiah 38, the prophet of God has said to, Isaiah, to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, put thy house in order, for thou shalt surely die. And uh, Hezekiah, you know, was not contented with just a scratch on the surface of the matter. He went into his closet, he shut the door, shut himself behind the door, and he turned his face unto the Lord. He was like saying unto the Lord, I will not take no for an answer. He came unto the Lord. You know, those that, that seek God's face, that tarry in the process of seeking God's face, that desperately assert their, their personhood, their personality, their personal relationship with God, their personal standing before God, and, and place a demand upon the decisive systems of the Godhead, they have their matters attended to in the realms of existence. It is not true that God is in heaven doing what he likes upon the earth. No, sir. We who are on earth are also occupying an ambassadorial status, representing the systems of heaven here on earth. For that reason, our opinions also do matter. That is why people should not hurry into God's presence and hurry away. In the text that we read in John chapter 20, uh, you know, three personalities came to the graveside. Uh, Mary was there and then Peter was there and John was there. And Peter and John came in and hurried away. But one person said, no, I will not leave. I, I will see the bottom of this matter. It was in the process that Jesus appeared to her and said, I have risen from the dead. Take this message back to the disciples. This Mary Magdalene, a woman, became the first evangelist to announce the resurrection story, the resurrection message, the resurrection mystery, the resurrection uh, declaration. It was, a, it was a woman, Mary Magdalene, that, uh, you know, uh, that, that carried this message for the first time. She became the anchor point for this resurrection uh, exciting message. 
what does it tell us? It tells us that no matter what the situation is like, we need to spend time in God's presence. The more time we spend in his presence, particularly at such a time as this, with crisis all over, food prices rising, uh, difficulty of making ends meet, and people reaching breakneck break situation, this is the time to spend more time in God's presence. Because as we spend time in more presence, the Lord brings the collectivity of our rational procedures into divine modulation and he gives us a direction. The Bible said there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end of it is the way of death. But when we tarry in, the, in God's presence, he will bring our thoughts together and then he will show us a direction, show us the way. God will definitely show the way. God will intervene in your situation. God will give you a breakthrough. My God will give you a breakthrough. Close your eyes and begin to pray. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we glorify your holy name. Lord, you never disappoint those that put their trust in you. The people that put their trust in you, Lord, they are like Mount Zion, which is not removed, it abides forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so, Lord, you are round about your people from this time for and forevermore. Oh, Lord, your people are seeking your face this morning. Grant them an extraordinary breakthrough, an open door, oh God, particularly at such a trying moment as this. I pray for a resounding breakthrough for those who are putting their trust in you this morning. Give them a resounding breakthrough that will deliver unto them their desired testimony, their desired expectation. Oh God, my Father, let your name be glorified. We commit the affairs of this day into your hands. We pray that you order our footsteps onto the pathways of divine breakthrough and let your name be exalted. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be exalted, name be exalted Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus mighty name we've prayed amen we thank you for fellowshipping with us today we invite you to join us tomorrow morning same time same station for another special edition of the daily fountain if you are led to sponsor or support this program please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen also Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.